Okay, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining this week's Tips and Tricks webinar. Today's topic is on proactive support. Um, please use the Q&A chat if you have any questions. We'll make sure we answer those during the webinar. Our presenter today is a whole team. We have the proactive support team. Uh, we have Avi, Morgan, and Katya. Uh, Avi's in Israel, and Morgan and Katya are out of our Ottawa, Ottawa attack. Um, so with that, we'll get started. I think, Morgan, you're up first. Good morning awesome. and welcome, and uh, the floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks, Robert. And like Robert said, my name is Morgan, and myself, um, our manager, Abby, and Katya are part of the pro support team. Uh, Katya and I are pro customer success managers and have prepared a quick presentation today and a couple of demonstrations of our live report to walk through with you. And then I know we'll have our regular Q&A at the end. Um, so I'm just going to get started with the presentation and then um, at the end, we'll take any of your questions. Everybody able to hear me okay and the screen share is, is good? Yep, you're all good. Perfect. Okay, so let me review how we've historically provided support. It's really been a reactive approach. We can probably agree that this approach is typically manual, which provides martial monitoring and minimum coverage. Back in 2017, we actually launched Checkpoint Pro Support, which gave us the ability to collaborate with customers and detect issues faster with goals to avoid major impacts within your environment. Now we created this service on a three tier kind of system. So once the devices are configured to share non-sensitive data, we actually have daily monitoring, which will assess the Checkpoint devices 24 hours of the day. If we detect any of those key issues within those 24 hour periods, Pro has two different methods that they will, notif that will notify you on those issues. Now, the first and most important feature is our automatic and preemptive SR creation. Essentially, um, for this method, SRs will open upon detection of specific high severity issues and actually include information for the engineer that gets assigned to help expedite the resolution process. A second method of notification is via our online diagnostics report, which is just, is just available within the Checkpoint User Center. This report will roll up and refresh daily and will include also the alerts that create the automatic and preemptive ticket. If you prefer, you can actually opt to have this report sent to your email as well on a weekly or daily basis. And after the presentation, I'm going to actually walk you through a live demonstration of this report. And once Katia pops on here, she's going to deep dive into those ticket activities and some use cases to really bring each tier full circle here. Now, before we get over to the live demo, which is a little bit more exciting, of course, than our presentation here today, uh, let's talk a little bit about what we can monitor with Pro Support. So today we have hundreds of indicators and subsets of indicators that are picking up on alerts and faults. Um, the parameters that we're monitoring are large, of a large range, but you can expect to see some alerts that are related to cluster Excel stats, logging patterns, process crashes, kernel crashes, overall system health, um, memory, throughput, CPU stats. The list really goes on. Um, on the screen here, you can see just a basic uh, kind of example of our metric groups and example parameters that we're using with Pro today. But once we get into that report, you'll actually be able to see some live um, alerts that we have available within our indicator base. Um, so you can really get a feel for what those alerts will look like and what different types of alerts we have for these different types of metric groups. Now, uh, what, were, what would be the benefits of Pro Support for you guys? Well, firstly, real data is collected to identify points of failure, and Pro is going to alert on them in a unified dashboard. High severity automatic service requests are going to be open immediately, and as I said, they're very detailed to help us expedite the resolution process. All while Pro is going to be automating hundreds of daily checks in order to hopefully simplify the management of your daily troubleshooting tasks. But overall, and most importantly, this service is going to help you see faster result time um, due to the fact that our pro tickets include all the details and our pro reports, once we get in there, actually have actionable remediation steps with linked SKs so that we can review what the issue um, may pertain when it comes to the solution or the symptoms that you may be seeing so we can pinpoint uh, the best solution for you. Now, um, I'm just gonna switch over here to our uh, report portal. 
So it's very easy to get into your report portal, just about as easy as it is to activate ProSupport. Um, it's good to note that ProSupport is actually just available within your system. So you won't have to um, purchase a license or do any on-prem installation with our service. Um, it actually is just a setting within your global properties to share non-sensitive data, a policy push, and a set of a pro contact. Um, your pro contact will be notified upon any ticket creation that may be automatically created for pro support. Now, how do I get to the portal? So you'll just log into your user center as you see me logged in here. Um, I believe that your option will say support slash services, but the same place that you go for support center. Uh, once you get there underneath um, support center, you'll notice there's a checkpoint pro report option. Um, unless you've purchased pro or you have an active evaluation, uh, which we'll talk about in just a few moments, uh, you will just see this what is pro page. Now, um, something good to note is that any checkpoint customer is going to be eligible for a free 60 day trial of the service. And um, you can reach out to me, which you'll be getting my contact information to do so if you're interested in that. Um, if we turn on an evaluation, you then will see your active evaluation account and you can set your pro contact just right from your portal. So there really is only two steps to activate the service. Um, either purchase or start an evaluation, um, configure your devices, and set your contacts. So essentially, I suppose three. Now, uh, today I've just pulled a live demonstration report that will scrub all the sensitive data. And once you first get in here, you'll have your overview page. Um, once this loads here, you'll have some very good information about what's going on in the environment. But since we've got our service requests here, um, any of those open service requests by created by ProSupport in particular can be tracked from your overview page or your service request page here. Uh, once you get into your overview page, you're just gonna have a very quick glance of what's at risk in your environment. So devices at risk, um, in this case, um, in our demonstration report, we actually have 11 devices triggering high priority alarms, for example. You can click into these and view just the high priorities. So once you click into them, you'll actually be able to view all of the alerts that fall under them as they could be related. So they will not hide, um, but only devices showing high priority will uh, show here. You've also got a quick diagnostic summary so you can know what's in trouble. Um, are most of the alerts within the gateways or are they within your management and log servers? Again, you can click right into here to view the 76 devices with alarms, for example, or the 13 management or log servers with alarms. Um, you can also see which of these are medium and low. In this case, there's no high severity in the management and log servers, but we do see the 11 uh, devices with high severity in our gateways. Okay, um, from your overview page, you have the ability to export these reports into Excel or PDF if you need to manipulate the data, maybe create some pivot tables. Um, you can do that, or if you need to send it off to maybe someone in upper management or somebody that doesn't have access to the user center account. You can export this full report for the dates that you've selected, which you can go back historically, um, and you can export that report and send it along in version of PDF. And it's important to remember that there won't be any sensitive information about your environment in your pro report, so you won't have to worry about sending that. Um, we will have uh, this information about your devices, so MAC address, host name, hardware type, the SKU, the key, the account ID it's linked to, this will be helpful if you have multiple account IDs, but you'd like to view your reports um, consolidated in one. The configuration that's being run and the firewall version. Once we expand in, there's a little bit more information once we get down to our green alerts, which are just really information and tracking. Um, so you can see IPS stat info here, but you can also track the first 10 fixes installed on in the machine and the take that you're running if you're not sure. Um, so we can see here that we're running RD40, build 118, take 94. And also all the blades that are enabled and entitled on this machine. Okay, so at first glance, you have a lot of inventory information. Once we expand in, you've got your alarms here. So we'll just go over the top one. Um, in this case, we've got a system alert, which was detected on June 1st. Um, the description of this indicator is just that we're dropping some packets due to core cell Q size. On Wednesday, June 1st, we actually had um, the 21,054 dropped packets. Um, and then there's actually some remediation steps, which will be very helpful for you. So in this case, it's likely that the input queue is not large enough to handle the traffic. So 
you have your SK on how to address this issue right here in your report. Um, some of you probably have some experience going through our large knowledge base. Sometimes it's hard to find um, your, uh, the right SK for the issue that you're experiencing. So we've done that work for you here in the report. Um, even if they're advanced or expert level SKs, they're still going to uh, be in your report and you'll be able to click on them. Uh, then you'll just notice some other valuable alerts here, like CPU, for example, and the multi-cores, um, some patch level alerts. Now, just really quick before I pass it off to Katia, some tips and tricks kind of as you're going through your pro report to speed up your review. If you kind of want to do single level filtering, or maybe you just know your host names really well and you want to just look at host name one. When we're not in demonstration mode, your host name, if it was named host name one, would pop up here really quick instead of having to go through the 103 devices. You can also type in trigger words for types of alarms. Uh, you probably noticed that once I typed in Torx Bell, um, some devices filtered out actually. So we only have seven devices on the screen and each of them are triggering an alert related to Torx Bell. So you also have a multi-level filtering option over here to speed up your review. So you could maybe select your security gateways that are triggering high priority alerts. Uh, maybe they're clusters and they're running RAD40. So you can refine that search and now you're just looking at your clusters that are high priority um, that are running RAD40, for example. You can always clear out um, these at any time. And one last very uh, quick tip just to kind of clean up your report. If there's some things in here maybe that aren't as critical for you or you're not interested in the blades enabled and entitled on your machines, maybe. Um, of course, every environment is going to be different. Um, you do have the option to just kind of hide alerts. Um, they won't delete overall, so you'll always be able to reference back to them, and I'll show you in a few minutes where you can find those. But once you hit the little icon that you saw me hit here, when you're in your own account and not in demonstration mode, you'll get a little box that pops up here that will ask you if you would like to hide this blade alert just for this particular device or for everything in the environment. Now, maybe you have some machines that are being taken out of your environment and you'd like to hide them as a whole because you're not interested in tracking them, but they're still in there for a week or two. You can actually exclude the devices as well um, with the same option here. So you just click on the whole device and exclude it from the report. Now you see you have some exclusion options up here. Um, when you have exclusions added, you'll see a number here. So if you have two, we'll have two exclusions added. You can click into them. You're going to be able to view if somebody added them for everyone's view and who added that. Um, and you'll also be able to view any of your personal exclusions and add them back into your report whenever you'd like. Okay. Um, now, we already went over this, but this is your service request tab. So um, you can track any of those pro tickets from here as well. And I know that was a lot to take in in just the short 14 minutes, but that's kind of it for the pro portal. Of course, there's other um, alerts in here and what you saw on the screen during the presentation is not what we're limited to and what we report, but um, this is kind of pro in a nutshell and what our portal will look like. So I'm gonna pass it off to Katya, who's just gonna talk a little bit more about some stuff that we can do for you and also some use cases and some more ticket activities. Thanks, Morgan. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks for having us. Uh, I recognize a bunch of names in the in the group, so I'm I'm happy that you were able to join. And likely, we've worked together at some point uh, regarding your pro setup um, or onboarding. Um, so I'm doing the same types of roles as Morgan. And today, what I'll do is look at some of the use cases from a traditional ticket to what we see within Pro, and also how using the report can help um, grab those issues before they become what we see in tech, which are often outages. Um, and as Morgan said, please feel free to put your uh, questions in the QA and we'll, we'll definitely answer those at the end. Um, so when we see, uh, for example, you know, VPNs, especially today with uh, remote work and uh, resources all over the world, VPNs are, are critical um, and can have a great impact if they go down uh, with, without warning. 
So today, you know, what I did is I looked at a customer case where their VPN went down because their certificate expired. Um, you know, you do get a warning when you're installing the policy, which I've pulled here, um, but, you know, it's possible to miss and, and it is missed, which we know because we, we created an indicator to catch it. Um, and what we see when we open up a ticket, uh, in this case, number one, it comes in as a very high priority, right? Because there's um, users aren't able to connect, they can't access services. I know for us, if our VPN ever goes down, you know, we can't use our internal chat, the internal resources are gone, our emails down, and, um, you know, so that can make it quite difficult to be able to uh, get your work done. So in this case, uh, the user created a, an SR with TAC. The first thing we did was ask for a CP info. We did a debug of uh, their, their VPN, and then we reviewed that file. So we did find that there was a certificate error that it had expired. So we helped and we renewed it, push policy. So actually this ticket moved pretty quickly, but I would say it was about, you know, it was multiple hours of work. Um, and during that time, um, obviously users and services were impacted. So when we look at what you see on the pro side, um, you know, we start warning about VPN certificates 60 days before they expire. And we'll tell you which gateway needs to be renewed and that sort of thing. And I also highlighted one above, which is uh, when an ICA is going to expire, because that also has a great impact. And that one actually has such a great impact that we open up a service request in those cases. Um, so anything catastrophic like that, uh, we will assist to make sure that uh, we don't miss that uh, renewal. Um, and we upload a whole bunch of information to help us to when we're opening up those tickets uh, through TAC automatically, all the gateway details, you know, if there's a, a stack trace, that kind of thing all comes to us. And then as Morgan pointed out, you know, we're going to go drive the user to um, the SK, which helps them renew. In all of these cases, you can reach out to TAC, but in this case, you see we've had no outage. Um, there was no stress or rush trying to get it updated. Um, it's just by using the reports regularly and checking in on certainly the high priority items that um, you can avoid any uh, unplanned downtime. Now, a memory leak is something that occurs and can have great impact and also can take some time to uh, diagnose. Uh, this was a service request that I had reviewed um, in the past, just to see um, how did we do on the pro side versus non-pro. So in this case, you know, if you've had a memory leak, you know, once you exhaust the memory, you often have a kernel crash um, and the device comes down, you've got a core dump and all of that. So in this case, what the user was seeing was that there was high memory, they were dropping a lot of connections, there was uh, slow service. Um, and we worked with them just over two weeks. Uh, we applied a script, we reviewed files, we did a bunch of file transfers back and forth. Then we had to manually search to see what other devices were impacted. So that can be you know, one of the other benefits is with Pro, we have the visibility to, to the whole organization. So from the Pro side, um, we've had instances like this and actually we look at memory and capacity in a bunch of different ways. So these are just some examples. This didn't necessarily occur in all of the cases that I saw, but here, you know, we see that we're dropping traffic due to capacity. Um, we also have an alarm, a simple alarm, you know, a line in the sand about memory utilization. And, you know, if it's over 70%, we're going to flag that as well. If we see anomalies, so we, you know, we've got that CP view data for a much longer period of time. We're able to build baselines for your device, for each device, based on that information. So that's a big advantage because we sort of understand what's normal for a particular device. And in this case, we can see the average usage of memory has gone way up over the last seven days. And the last one, which I think is usually our biggest kind of red flag is this gradual increase. Now, this actually was a, a you know, fairly significant increase over three weeks, um, but we will flag these also when it's an a much smaller increment, but where we see that regularly the memory utilization is uh, rising every week, um, we will flag those. So these can be related to memory leaks. Um, and in this case, you know, we were able to pretty much diagnose that uh, 
um, almost immediately. And then to sort of verify, as Morgan showed you, you know, you can just search, um, you can export as well, which would, would work as well to do a query through Excel or PDF. But here you can just look for a gradual increase and we see all the devices that are impacted by that. And sometimes that works too, if we're looking at a particular version that we know is causing issues. So um, it's very easy to look at the whole environment. So in that case, for that customer that had a, a leak, um, you know, we were able to pretty much review the report. We don't necessarily need to collect a whole bunch of additional data. Um, you know, we could see that there was impacts within the environment, but we could also plan some reboots because we understood what was happening so that we could avoid a catastrophic crash where it's, you know, impacting users. So, you know, obviously we don't want to have to reboot the devices because of something like this, but if we can plan it and do it in a time that's lowest impact, it allows us to give a little breathing space to do that investigation with our development team, which is what we did. Very last item um, that I was going to review today is this is more just I wrote cool feature because for me, I thought it was pretty amazing when we were able to do this. Um, this is not typically part of the pro service, but, you know, uh, we work on special requests very often. So in this case, we had a large install based customer who wanted to enable dynamic split. That's what we had recommended to them to help manage their CPU. So we can see here these are the number of minutes it's spending in these higher ranges. So 91 to 100 are these dark red ones and so on and so forth. And so we picked one device and applied the dynamic split to that unit and we applied it on June 6th. And so we could see right away that it had exactly the impact that we wanted, which was great. And it really justified uh, the additional work that it would take to apply that change across the board. Um, so that was that's one of the really uh, cool ways that you can you know work with us for some special requests. Um, we're happy to do that sort of thing, especially when we're trying to look at you know more for a, a long term impact type thing to understand whether the change is going to be worth uh, the effort. You know, so in general, I would say what we see from using the reports and and the data that we collect that using using your online reports sort of on a regular basis, you know, daily or weekly is really valuable. And actually there was a question in the chat um, about, can you get your, your report emailed? And you can do that today. We can send it daily or weekly um, in PDF, Excel, or JSON format. And uh, just, you can email either Morgan or myself or contact underscore pro at checkpoint.com. And I'm sure Robert will send out that, um, send out that uh, contact information um, so that you can get that data directly to your inbox. Um, and that was really all that I had uh, to present today. Okay, great, um, thank you. Have some questions here. I think you, you showed this uh, Morgan, but covers management and gateways, right? It's not just a gateway feature. Yeah, that's correct. And. Uh, Log servers, smart mm -hmm. event, everything. Okay. And as far as the gateways, any uh, caveats there as far as cloud or VSX or anything? No, we support all of those. Um, for VSX, we will report um, on context level items as well. Um, so if there's you know too many internal hosts, it will let you know which context we're seeing that on. Um, and uh, you know, even if the gateways don't have access to the internet, they can report via the management station. So I know there's a lot of people that have certain areas that that have more restrictions around uh, communications, um, but they can report via their management as well. Oh, great. Um, does this process run continually or is it scheduled on the devices? It is scheduled. So it runs, it doesn't run continually, continuously. Um, it runs on certain uh, scenarios. So 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. is when the process is scheduled to run sometime in that period. And it collects 24 hours worth of data so that we pull into that full report that you saw. But if there is a catastrophic event like a kernel crash, the diagnostics process runs at that time uploads the stack trace to the ticket and creates all of that information so that TAC can begin working on it and reach out to your team. Oh, great. Um, yeah. Kind of related to that then is, uh, 
what's the criteria for it to proactively open a, a case? Is it the highs or is it, how does it? So typically we're opening up proactive tickets for high severity issues um, that actually will require our assistance to resolve. So just off the top of my head right now, some items that we're creating tickets for are all kernel crashes, um, the top 50 process crashes, um, some hardware checks like uh, RAID or uh, fan failure, um, hotfix uh, matching, some ICA cert expiry, um, so those types of items. So critical items that are going to require our assistance to get resolved um, or may require a fix, for example, something like that, uh, will create a proactive SR. And so we do have, like, if there was something you wanted to, you know, something that that's in development today is some customized alerts um, where you could get an email notification. And we do also have an API tool that you can use to um, integrate in your own environment. So like Morgan said, if it's something we must help with, like a hardware replacement, that will open with us. But there might be some other items you want to have tickets within your own system to let you know about. And, and that is something that uh, we can work with you on. Great. And uh... Uh, one thing, just just to, uh, I this is Avi. I I work with Katya and Morgan, so just just uh, that it be it'll be clear for all of you. So you can uh, you can assign uh, for uh, sixty days of uh, of evaluation period free of charge, and you can try the product, uh, get get to talk to us, and you know uh, get the feeling how does it serve you. And um, and hopefully after that period, you will choose to continue with the service, right? Yeah, for sure. And um, like Abby said, with the evaluations, it's something that I'm uh, kind of running with uh, with my team and Katya is of course always helping me out. Uh, so if you have any other questions or you'd like to start an evaluation, I'm sure Robert is going to send over our contact information. So feel free to reach out to us. Um, and we can talk about what you need to do to start a trial. Though, like I said at the beginning of the call, uh, when I was doing the presentation, the activation steps for Pro are just so simple. Um, so no license, no on-prem. We just have to set the devices to share data, which we can go over um, the information that's being shared if, if you need some more information about that. Um, and we can turn on the eval. Uh, once you have your Pro report, then you'll be good to go. So um, please feel free to reach out to us, even if you just need some more information uh, technically or about the information that's being shared. And, and obviously during the eval period, we will we will be here. I mean, if you have any question or you need some some call or any kind of support, so we will be here in order to make sure you're going to be successful with this. Great. And there, there's available with uh, any support level, right? And it's a per UC offering. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah so just like everything else, it's just that every uh, thing in that UC will want to be covered by pro support. And it is just kind of like a, add on to support. So if you have premium support today, you can have premium plus pro. So you'll still get all your premium SLAs. You just add on the pro support. Okay, great. I think that covers it. Let me just make sure I didn't miss anything. All right. So thank you, Morgan, Katya, and Avi. Appreciate you guys joining us. Um, that was good. All great information. Yeah, like they said, I will send a follow up email with reference contacts, contact information. Um, and, you know, if anybody wants to take a look at this, talk to any of us or your account team. They'll be happy to help you out. Um, let's see. The follow up email will also have the recording link of this session if anybody wants to rewatch. And our next webinar will be in two weeks, and you will see the invitation for that soon. So everyone, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Avi, Morgan, and Katya, and uh, we'll see you here next time. Enjoy your thank day. Bye-bye. You. Thanks, everyone. everyone.